Not only are they so different, but they're so different in intention, and they were practicing right next to each other today, and I thought, you know, when we do down dog, I see two people that will be in the demonstration for sure. Turn this hand out, though, because we did correct that, and I want that. There. It's better for your life. Cool. Okay, we're observed. We're observed. We're good. Okay, both of you rest. She has a hip hinge that is very good. She has a tremendous amount of flexibility in the shoulder that allows that to occur. May have a good hip hinge. We cannot tell from down dog because of the resistance in the shoulder. So down dog is not a tell for someone's ability to move through the hips because they would also be able to need to move through the spine and the shoulder, All right? So many options, a little bit less options. Options can be a good thing. Options can be an obnoxious thing. When you have less options, you have less things to think about. When you have a plethora of options, you have a plethora of things to think about. We'll work with you first. Come on into it. Do what you just did. A vacation downward facing dog. <laughs> what does that mean? It's a, it's a fun place to go for a little bit of time. Okay, it's a fun place to go for a little bit of time. We always want to remember with downward facing dog, what is the most important thing about downward facing dog? The single most important thing in downward facing dog is leaving downward facing dog. What do you do out of this pose more than anything else? You go other places, you go everywhere from here, okay? Downward facing dog is an airport, it's a train station, it's a bus, whatever you want to think of as a transportation vehicle, you go everywhere from here, okay? So, while this downward facing dog, and if we really want to explore the shoulder, it goes deeper. With ease, that was no force added to the equation for the record, right? But, again, to go, from, many, to go to he, from here to many places, very hard, so rest for a second. When you start working with people in downward facing dog, the number one goal is transition. The number one goal is transition. Somebody's setup could be okay, but if they have a fluency in getting in and out of that space, they're all right, you know what I mean? It's like, um, it's like an old airport that still kind of functions, like the security line moves, and you're like, thank goodness, right? Because some security lines don't move very well. All right, so let's set ourselves back up. And then from here, what I want you to do is find plank pose. Good. Come into plank without your core overly active. Lengthen your collarbones out. Think of all the things we just worked on. Very nice. Now, bend the knees. Flick your tailbone slightly up to the sky. Now, you're going to push back your hips to wait. Don't move. You're going to push your hips back towards your heels or towards the space above your heels, however that makes sense to you. When they say stop, you stop. Whenever you all think it's time. Stop. Drop your head. Good. Yeah. That's awesome. How does it feel? Good. Harder. <laughs> she can, if she wants, to keep lengthening the spine. Feel as though you're pushing your femurs into your hamstrings, and you can keep the knees bent, but that'll lengthen you, but don't let your chest drop. Don't let your chest drop. Your chest doesn't follow, only your hips lift higher. Yes, right? Shh. Exhale to close. Go ahead. We want to think less about the lower belly here, and more about the rib cage. Less about the lower belly, more about the rib cage. Why? Rib flare is a big part of it, yes. What else? Really use your lower belly. Really use it, really use it, really use it, really use it. You'll start to round here, okay? Even at this level of flexibility and range. Feels like the collarbones lift. Collarbones lift out towards your hands. Good. And then rib cage knits in. Bend your knees a little bit. Pull your hips up and away. Try to lengthen yourself. Feel as though your hips are going up and your collarbones are coming forwards. Yes. Good. And then ribs. Good. And that's really long and connected. Very good. Cool. Claps. All right. 
So we've talked a little bit about this today personally, but he's had some shoulder issues, and you're seeing that in the down dog. You're seeing that directly in the position. So what can we do here to help this out a bit? I think his hands are wide enough. What I think you're seeing is that we have, <laughs> it's funny because we did this in plank, but we have one uh, uh, shoulder that's not participating, and it's the right shoulder. And so what we want to do here is really try to get that involved in the equation by wrapping, lifting, you want this just a touch forward, but bend this elbow, good. And then feel as though this rolls to your side body. And now the shoulders are more level. And now there's more similarities between the sides. There we go. Broad, <laughs> open. And then from here, we can just put slight pressure there. And then you can bend your knees and then pull your hips up and back. And he actually has so much more space than was initially shown, but doesn't quite uh, coordinate this space, doesn't quite trust it yet. Right? So we can keep broadening, and that comes with integration and wrapping. So every time you wrap, you push. You wrap, you push. I want you to find your right thumb. I want you to find your right thumb so strongly and broaden. Broaden on this right shoulder, broaden. Yeah, create space there, and then wrap. Good. Try to not lean into it, just wrap it. Yes, that's your spot. Keep this there, and then bend your knees a little bit, and then pull your hips up. Pull. Yes, keeping this here. There you go. How much different is that, yeah? That's wild. Feels so weird. Yeah, yeah. The thumb is better. Yeah, because that's what's, that's what's grounding. Your index knuckle doesn't even need to ground, really. We'll take the hands a little bit further forward. And then from here, what I want to do is roll slightly out, like you're going towards plank, but you hit pause in the middle. Good. And then from here, bend the elbows. Wrap your triceps back in space. Good. And now, don't, you don't need to lower the elbows. Less, that's just what happened, right? Because again, that can't happen. Now begin to straighten the arms, keeping this. Keep your elbows hugging towards your elbows towards each other, elbows towards each other, elbows towards each other as you lift your hips. Think about lift. Yes. 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 That is you. That is your position. That is you. That is really strong, really connected. Keep thinking forearms together, forearms together, forearms together, shoulders broad, forearms together. That'll create the wrap for you. That'll create the wrap for you. That'll create the push and rest. <laughs> so again, yeah, no worries. So again, just what we talked about a moment ago though, right now is, is that position where we got everything to really connect. Is that a functioning airport or an airport that's under construction? No, that thing is under construction, fam. Like, the, the, there is no, the capacity to transition in and out of there, she could barely hold it up consistently for 10, 20 seconds. So when you have the holds in the beginning of class, work on that, right? Really try to find it, but then as class goes, it's okay to be in that space where you feel that you can move, right? But always try to come back, especially in the beginning, because that will become your pattern over time. Does that make sense? Right? So we want to acknowledge that like, hey, if, we, if you're someone that lacks arm integration, well, you're transitioning in and out of being on your arms here. So if you're there and your arms are like shaking and you feel like you're going to go to dolphin pose or you just can't move, that's not going to help you transition. Right? So know that we can wrap, integrate, push, find those connections, but then step away from that as an idea in the flow portions of class because again we need to be able to move as much as possible. Does that help? Cool.